You know, the conversation around cybersecurity never really does seem to be over. On this show alone, we've talked about the topic generally, we've talked about the threats posed by ransomware, and even more. Bottom line, the potential topic areas around cyber are endless, but you've got to start somewhere. And when it comes to cybersecurity, one of the most valuable things a state government or any entity for that matter can have is visibility. In order to deal with the threats facing them from attackers of all different shapes and sizes, government must first know what lies ahead. And for that, they need that visibility. This is Priorities coming to you today from the Mid-Year Conference of the National Association of State Chief Information Officers here in Crystal City, Virginia. Today, on our special video edition of Priorities, we'll be talking about gaining more visibility across the state government enterprise to improve cybersecurity. Joining us today, we have three guests who bring varying geographic and professional experience to this task, but at the end of the day, are on the front lines of making sure their enterprises are protected. First up, we have Maria Thompson. She's the Chief Risk Officer for the state of North Carolina. Maria, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Jake. Also with us today, we have Chris Boozy. He's the Chief Information Security Officer for the state of Minnesota. Chris, happy to have you on Priorities. Thank you for having me. And finally, we have Robert Miles. He's the Business Development Manager for RSA State and Local Government and Education Practice. Robert, thanks for being with us today. Good morning, Jake. And I just want to take a second to thank the good folks at RSA for sponsoring today's episode of Priorities. And with that, let's start the show. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, we've, we've talked a lot on priorities and on state scoop about cybersecurity, but I think in order to set the tone for this conversation, you know, we're really trying to have today, uh, we really need to build a base for what's currently happening in the state government field. Uh, Maria, can you tell me a little bit about how your state is protecting the enterprise and, and what your overall enterprise cyber strategy looks like? So Jake, um, it's interesting that the focus of this uh, cast is about visibility because uh, that has been one of my priorities from day one um, being at the state. I've been with the state roughly two years now and my first focus was I need more visibility and two years later it's still been I need more visibility and we're working towards that. So the way that we hope to achieve that is through multiple ways. Obviously we are uh, using best practices, establishing a governance model, so on and so forth, but the key thing that I've been focusing on is building relationships with the executive agencies, legislative agencies, uh, judicial agencies, so that we can get that visibility. And we are, we're looking to do that through various um, projects, which would be uh, consolidation of our tools and technologies so that we can get that visibility into our enterprise. That's really important. That's really cool. So that's fascinating. And, and Chris, I'll bring the same question to you. What does your cybersecurity strategy look like, and how are you trying to protect your enterprise in Minnesota? Okay. Well, first off, um, our IT security strategic plan is one of three core artifacts that, uh, that form the basis of our enterprise security program. So along with our strategic plan, we also have a service delivery model, and I think that's really important. It defines the 12 core services that we deliver uh, for the cyber on cybersecurity for the state as a whole. We also have an enterprise security policy and standard framework, which outlines uh, a risk-based bar for the entire organization. And then finally, the strategic plan itself, it's, it's really an interesting document. Uh, it's a living document. It, it's a five-year vision of where we want to go from a cybersecurity perspective. But it breaks that vision up into four main themes. The first one is proactive risk management. Uh, the second theme is, uh, is gaining better visibility into our environment. The third theme is, is incident response. And then finally, the last theme, theme is partnering for success. So collectively, those documents bring together our, st our strategic program. But I think probably the, um, the strategic plan is probably our most important document now at this point. We update it annually, and we're always trying to have a five-year vision of the future, and, uh, and that outlines, outlines the 18 core strategies now within those four themes um, that our state is hoping to achieve right now. That's awesome. Thank you for that baseline. And, and Robert, at RSA, you're overseeing you know, multiple aspects of, of the business and, and figuring out where and what state governments are doing in this space. What should the state government audience be doing to protect the enterprise, and, and what should their overall enterprise cybersecurity strategy look like? So that's, that's kind of a loaded question, and, but I'll, I'll go back to the, the core practices that both Maria and Chris have talked about. And I think it's fundamental to the practice to recognize and understand that Security is not a one and done. It's a very complex, very uh, progressive moving target that you go through. Um, it's not something that you just get to be able to fix by saying we've got antivirus and we're done. It's, it's all of the pieces that play into it. It's talking about, you know, Chris said there's 18 elements within their program they have to be able to address. 
uh, I think that for for that to work, there there has to be a, a lot of collaboration between the vendor partners and the state agencies to really help them uh, go through the process. And technology is not a panacea. It doesn't really fix all the issues that are out there. It's kind of an enablement process that we can add on to the core practices they've already established and got set up and then really facilitate that moving forward. Sure. And Chris, I want to come back to you for this next question. Uh, you know, we just set the stage for cybersecurity in Minnesota, uh, but where are the challenges that you face when it comes to protecting that enterprise and how are you working to overcome them? Okay. Well, first of all, when I would define challenges, I put the challenges into two broad buckets. First of all, there's the security challenges that we face. And when we look at our, at our strategic plan today and the 18 core strategies, what those strategies really do is they formalize the gaps in our security program today. They're saying, where do we need to be? Where are we, are, where are we today? And, uh, and those gaps are formalized in the plan. So that helps us articulate what the challenges are. And there's technical challenges in there, but there's also challenges um, that deal with more of the overall management of the program and HR issues and staffing. So that's the security bucket um, that, uh, that we need to accomplish uh, to get our program into the point where it needs to be to protect our resources. But, uh, but the second challenge area that I think is really, really important to talk about in state government is resources. And when you look at uh, some of the NASIO studies that have been done, one of the biggest challenges government security professionals face is that the programs are significantly under-resourced. In a world in the private sector where organizations with a high risk level spend upwards of 7 to 10 percent of the total IT spend on cybersecurity, the average in state government is about 2 percent. So if we're going to accomplish and get our programs into the place um, where they need to be to adequately protect the assets that we have in high risk environments like government, we have to figure out a way to address the resource challenges that we face because it, when it comes right down to it, um, as a state security leader, I'm part of the risk equation, but we also have to recognize that the overall funding base for the program also um, is a contributor to where we are from a risk perspective. So Robert, I'll, I'll bring this back to you. You've, you've heard the challenges that, that Chris is facing in Minnesota and you heard Maria's overview of what she sees in North Carolina. Uh, how are you working with your partners uh, in the state government community to overcome some of the challenges that they're facing when it comes to cybersecurity and visibility? So I, I think that's um, really the driving the partnership. It, it's not just saying, hey, I'm a vendor, I'm here to sell you stuff, but it's really can, what can we do that will benefit the state agency, that will give them the visibility. And it's kind of funny that you talk about visibility now because back when I was a CISO, one of the fundamental practices that I always struggled with was visibility into the environment. And whether that's a single facility or a distributed computing system that has multiple facilities, it all goes back to the same structure as I don't have visibility to be able to see what's going on inside my network. I can't accurately protect that environment. So I think that the, the struggle is real and it's the ability to bring tools and solutions and the collaboration environment that goes into that that's going to help the states really succeed. Sure. And Maria, same question to you in North Carolina. Again, we've heard about uh, Chris's challenges and, and how he's working to overcome them in Minnesota, but what are some of the challenges that you face when it comes to protecting your enterprise and how are you trying to overcome those? So, you know, without echoing what uh, Chris has mentioned, because I, I believe that we're all struggling in the same, we're in the same boat with the, with the same challenges as far as uh, budget. That's one of the, the, the key um, issues that we, we all face within state government. And also the ever-changing um, administration, if you will, uh, that causes a little bit of uh, difficulty in maintaining a steady state and starting projects and finishing those projects. Um, so, you know, those, those, those definitely the resources. We have an aging population within our IT um, group. We have the silver tsunami breathing down our backs. How are we able to get folks in to keep those folks um, attain and retain those uh, cyber professionals within our uh, environment are the challenges that we're facing. It's fascinating stuff. And so, you know, I want to dive a little bit deeper here uh, into the looming thought of, of what this enterprise we're talking about is. And as much as you can tell us, Maria, without obviously compromising anything on your end, how are you trying to gain more visibility across that enterprise? And what specifically is standing in your way of doing that? 
So I, I, I touched on it briefly a little bit earlier, um, where I, I spoke about the technologies and being able to leverage those te technologies across our enterprise. So taking a look at all the tools, the like tools and capabilities that we have, how they can integrate and interoperate with each other um, will allow us to get that the, the visibility. Also, it will help us when it comes to spending, because we don't want to, and, and what we've seen in the past is we have a lot of agencies that will um, buy a solution three different times versus you know making strategic uh, uh, purchases when it comes to our, our security tools and capabilities. So definitely doing that, um, integrating, as I mentioned before, our tools and capabilities, um, utilizing our folks, our resources across the enterprise so that if there is an agency that is without, that we are able to launch, whether it's a tiger team or support that agency with, with whatever uh, needs that they may have. Um, also, we're looking at seeing how we can um, leverage the, the, the budget um, capabilities that we have within the state so that we don't have the, the haves and have nots. We have the larger agencies that tend to have a little bit more of a flush, uh, slush when it comes to money, and then we have smaller agencies that are struggling to get money. So what I'm looking to do within the state of North Carolina is look across the landscape and uh, hopefully gain appropriated funds so that we can have a baseline security tools and it's not a matter of opting in for security it is you're going to have it um, and that is going to help you to protect this the at the end of the day it's the citizens data that we need to protect so definitely getting that solution in place and then if there's a if there's a particular agency that may have a uh, specific need security need above and beyond um, they can go out and purchase that on their own and Chris, I'll, I'll bring that back to you. You know, how are you trying to get more visibility into the Minnesota enterprise and really what stands in your way as you try to do that? Well, to start, I think uh, Maria had a really good answer to that question. We're doing a lot of the same types of things, trying to figure out where can we leverage our economy of scale with enterprise tools. But the goal today is not just getting visibility across the agencies, but we have to get visibility across the agencies 24-7, uh, 365. We're coming from a world where we had uh, some of our agencies that simply didn't have all the right security services in place uh, across the organization. Um, we had some organizations, for example, that didn't have dedicated security professionals even. So leveraging our economy of scale, getting that done 24-7, 365, that's really the goal. And what we're trying to do to make that happen is, uh, is we're trying to look at bringing those organizations into environments that have security baked in by default. Mm -hmm. So for example, we know there's not enough money to put on the table to go out there into agency specific data centers and build this up you know, 20 or more times across the state. So we're trying to build enterprise class data centers that have the robust monitoring controls and vulnerability management and privilege account management and all the things that people expect to have um, in terms of security best practices into those data centers and we're trying to move those uh, agencies into those environments where essentially you get security by default. Similarly, um, we're trying to bring the desktop type LANs together into one networking environment that has a security built in by default as well. So those are just a few examples of how we're trying to garner um, an enterprise-wide economy of scale, recognizing that the sophistication of the tools, um, we have to have technical wherewithal to manage them. They're also expensive as well. So those are just a few examples of how we're trying to do it in our environment. So finally, Robert, you know, what should states be doing to get the visibility that we're talking about with Maria and Chris here? What, what, what kind of strategies and, and tactics should they be taking to get that visibility and overcome those challenges and roadblocks that stand in the way? So Jake, you, you, you zeroed in on one of the keywords, and that's strategy. Uh, I think for too long, because of the dynamic nature of cybersecurity, states have been in a tactical reactive mode um, if you think about it, you know, we didn't build computing systems in, within a year's time period. They've been built over multiple years and multiple administrations and multiple cycles of technology. But as we look at the environment today, it's really looking at how, how can I get that visibility? Well, one, they talked about it. They said they have to do consolidation. Um, I did a, an assessment for a large county in the state of Georgia, and we found th they had three different programs that were doing the same thing. So it was asset management. We found a, uh, that they had duplicate networks that were running. So consolidation and streamlining, be able to look at it from a very strategic perspective, uh, taking a look at long-term perspectives and, and moving into a proactive modality instead of saying, I'm just going to react to 
the latest threat that's out on the marketplace. And I think that both of these individuals have very ably described that they are moving in that direction. So I'm looking at good things coming out of North Carolina and Minnesota to be able to say, you know, next year maybe we put them up on the award platform for the good things that are coming out of their agencies. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I want to bring us full circle here. Uh, you know, we started our conversation by getting an overview of where states are at, and, and now I want to get a look at what we can expect going forward. Chris, what does your strategy look like going forward, and, and how do you see that changing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, our strategic plan outlines 18 core strategies for our state. We've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours putting that together, vetting that plan, both within government, also with uh, private sector security leaders as well. So I believe, like I believe, we have the strategies in place. We need to just execute on those strategies. Um, that's going to be incumbent on us to make steps in the in the right direction in a lot of different areas. It's also going to be incumbent on us being able to figure out a way to have a better funding model for our state as a whole. So we know that to get to the next level, we're going to need. Um, better and more advanced tool capabilities across our organization. We also know that we're going to have to have uh, more vendor partnerships. So we don't believe that we need to have 24-7, uh, 365 monitoring, but we know that there's vendor services that can help us get there to supplement what we're doing today. So the strategy is in place. We're going to keep updating it every year, and we're going to keep moving the ball forward. But uh, I believe that we've laid the foundation today to execute, and now it's just a matter of getting the job done. Sure. And, and Robert, I'll, I'll bring this to you here. Uh, you know, what do you expect to see on the horizon as strategies and plans across government change, and how do you see that developing? So I, th I think that's one of the other things that, that the vendor community can help bring back to the state agencies as well, is that we have the resources to go out and source out other funding streams. And even though they're short term, we can go back and say, hey, we found this federal program that's giving money out for this specific architecture that you're trying to develop. So let's partner together, see if we can write the, the, the grant funding to be able to get that pulled into the state and at least get it kicked off from the perspective of looking at a technology or a strategic program implementation. Uh, I think the other piece is that, you know, building those relationships long term and being able to consistently be there and help out in the process is going to go a long way. And so, Maria, you're going to get the last word here. Uh, you know, what does your enterprise cybersecurity strategy look like going forward, and, and how do you see it growing and developing? We are definitely going to be focusing on continuous monitoring, getting, mon you know, getting our visibility through monitoring, uh, 365, 24 by 7. As Chris had mentioned, um, we actually uh, recently, we're in the process of, of engaging and then building out that environment within the state of North Carolina. And uh, making sure that we have continuous monitoring in place so that we can become more proactive. Like uh, someone mentioned earlier that we have been in a very reactive stance for quite some time and it is time for us to, to move that um, to the next level and to get to become more proactive. So allowing our folks to, to engage in threat hunting versus waiting for a tool or a capability to alert us that there is something anomalous in our network. So those are the things that we're definitely going to be honing in on in the, in the very near future. That's great. It's a fascinating note to, uh, to end on. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today on Priorities. Chris, Maria, Robert, uh, thank you all so much for being with us today. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thanks, Jake. Thanks again to North Carolina Chief Risk Officer Maria Thompson, uh, Minnesota CISO Chris Boozy, and RSA's Robert Miles for joining us today on Priorities to talk more about cybersecurity. Episodes of Priorities are posted once or twice a month and always updated on statescoop.com, so be sure to check back for more multimedia as well as all the latest news and events in the state and local government information technology community. I'm your host, Jake Williams, Statescoop's Manager of Strategic Initiatives. This episode of Priorities was brought to you by RSA. Thanks for watching.